Hi everyone, and welcome to the Azure Back to School. I'm your host, Amin. When it comes to building a web app on Microsoft Azure, there's a lot of powerful tools that you could use to uh, offload a lot of the uh, uh, complexity and, lot of, and solve a lot of the common issue that faces a developer when they build a web app on, on, uh, on the cloud and they want to expose this web app to the public. So instead of having to, uh, instead of having to implement um, those solutions within your code, what Microsoft Azure Application Gateway provides you with is a, I would, what I would call a superhero kind of tool because it provides you with a lot of uh, superpowers that would help you uh, that would help uh, address those th those challenges in provided in a seamless and, and intelligent way. Um, so Azure Application Gateway, what is what we call a uh, web traffic uh, load, ba uh, web load balancer or like a cloud native load balancer. Um, it runs on the layer seven of the TCP IP, um, uh, sorry, uh, on the OSI model, uh, which is the application level where we've got protocols like the HTTP and HTTPS, which, which are the common protocol when it comes to uh, web traffic. So let's explore, explore the power of the Azure Application Gateway and why do I think it's a, a superhero. So the, the first power of um, the first power of the Azure Application Gateway is the what we call the intelligent load balancing, and then uh, scaling. So uh, at the start, when you what we've got here, uh, basically the basic functionality that the Azure Application Gateway provides you with is the idea to load balance traffic between uh, your back uh, backend pool of services. So in this case, we've got virtual machines, virtual machine scale sets, or on-premises servers. The basic uh, load balancing uh, mechanism is what is called a round robin, as in like the first client or the first request is sent to the first virtual machine, the second is sent to the second, and the third to the third, and so on. Uh, but th this is just the uh, just uh, scratching the surface of this. Uh, there is a lot more intelligent routing that will, uh, load balancing, I should say, that we'll explore uh, uh, in a second. So uh, the first, uh, the first, uh, the first framework or the first methodology of actually uh, forwarding traffic is what is called path-based uh, routing. The idea is that the Azure Application Gateway would use uh, would use the URL or the path to your application, and based on a, a specific keyword. In this case, we've got the word images. It would actually forward traffic to a different uh, set of a bit different pool of servers. Uh, or like what we've got here, which is the uh, image server pool. So if the traffic is sent to the uh, to the uh, with a URL path containing the word images, it will send it to the uh, image server pool. And if the traffic contains the word video, it will send it to the video server pool. And this is what is called a path-based routing. Depending on the uh, what is in the path, there is a rule that would start to load balance traffic based on uh, uh, based on what what back end pool uh, it um, what uh, what back end pool it is related to um, the next is what we what is called a multiple uh, site routing in this case um, say that you've got multiple uh, web apps uh, each with its own uh, C name so for example you've got a web app uh, that is running in a C name of contosa.com You've got another web app uh, running in a C name of a fabricon.com. So in here, what the uh, Azure Application Gateway is going to do is that based on where is the traffic, uh, the request uh, is sent. So if it is sent to the contoso.com, it would forward it to the contoso uh, pool of backend services. If it is sent to the fabricon.com, it was sent to the fabricon uh, pool of services and the logic uh, gets uh, only deeper from there. Next, we'll talk about what is called a health probe. So uh, as, with any, uh, as with any intelligent load balancer, we've got what is called a health probe. A health probe is like, almost like a um, continuous uh, status check that is being uh, sent from the uh, uh, Azure Application Gateway. In this case, it would send an HTTP request um, to a to a specific um, HTTP port that you identify, and then just to double check that your uh, web server is uh, is healthy and responding back to client requests. So in this case, the Azure Application Gateway sent a traffic uh, sent a health probe to the first uh, virtual machine, right back with the status OK. The second is OK. The third didn't reply back. So what happens is that next time a user come in 
and then sends traffic, what Azure Application Gateway is going to do is that it's going to remove it from the remove the unhealthy machine from the uh, from from the uh, backend pool, and uh, by default, it, the, the timeout is thirty seconds, and then it tries three times before it actually give up on the server and says this is unhealthy. But what it also does is that it would always uh, it, it would keep on trying to check if the server is back on healthy, so it would add it again to the uh, to the backend pool. And the other smartness in uh, that was built in within the, uh, the Azure Application Gateway is that it comes uh, with auto scaling. The idea is that instead of you having to um, do some guess uh, uh, some guesswork or like over provision for the amount of load that your traffic will send, and then uh, you need to scale how much uh, instances of an Azure uh, Application Gateway you've got. What it comes with is a Depending on a, a scaling group that you define, if it pass, if the demand increase past a specific threshold, the, uh, it will scale out and create a provision new instances of your Azure Application Gateway to deal with the demand. You could also set a minimum capacity if you want to have, let's say, two or three instances of your Azure Application Gateway um, available all the time. The other, uh, there are other more. Uh, features built in within the uh, within the functionality of uh, load balancing traffic within the Azure Application Gateway, there are things like the session affinity, which is um, we talked about traffic being forwarded in a round robin fashion. So the first client would be sent to the first server, first client request, I should say, and then second client would be sent to the second server. The other thing is that if you've got like let's say like a um, an e-commerce site, so you want to make sure that all requests sent from one user would always be sent back to the same machine that handled the request in the first place. So let's say that user one talked to virtual machine one. Um, you want that you want, you want to make sure that the session would uh, we would have something like a. Um, a sticky session that will always send traffic from this specific user to the same virtual machine. So you don't have, so you don't want to have the user um, uh, accessing your web app on a machine, and then when when he wants to uh, when he wants to like add something to the basket, it would send to another machine because it would not make sense. The uh, the other uh, intelligence added here, which is the connection draining. The idea of a connection draining, let's say that you want to remove a virtual machine for planned maintenance, uh, but you don't want to disrupt your current session with your clients and users. So what connection draining is that it will start to it will stop sending traffic to this uh, virtual machine that you tagged uh, being uh, for uh, planned maintenance and. And uh, with with time, session uh, will drain. There like, will be no more new sessions to the uh, this machine until there is no more sessions at all, and then it will be safe to actually remove it from the backend pool and uh, perform the uh, plan maintenance. Um, the next uh, the next intelligence is actually you could even configure it with custom URL pages. You could even do things like URL redirect if you want to dry, redirect your uh, users from an uh, HTTP to an HTTPS uh, site. Uh, for example, if you uh, if you've got like a uh, if you built your logic into multiple uh, into multiple virtual machines where you've got uh, a specific set. Uh, if you want the client to be paying, or like if the client, if you want the client when he checks out, you would need to start to forward or redirect, I should say, the traffic to this uh, a new virtual machine. So that the idea it uh, the payment and the uh, checkout will be handled by a different virtual machine. And then again, if you've got a a, a, a a subdomain, for example, if you want to forward your clients or user, I should say, from contoso.com to blog.contoso.com. The next superpower of Azure Application Gateway that we are talking about here today is that Azure Application Gateway in reality is a layer seven load balancer and a uh, web application firewall built in. So it's two components uh, within one. Um, the idea is that a what with a web application firewall protect you against is it will protect you against uh, against common it will protect you against common uh, attacks that normally uh, that normally target web apps so things like SQL injection cross site scripting all those using what is called a Microsoft Threat Intelligence or a OWSP uh, standard 
specifically in this case, we are talking about version 3.2, which contains a set of blueprints about uh, of those uh, threats and attacks. And this is what the uh, web application firewall is going to protect you against. Um, the other superpower of the uh, of the uh, Azure Application Gateway is that it provides you beside the web beside the uh, web or the web application firewall, it provides you with the ability to encrypt your traffic end to end. For example, in this case, um, you uh, the, the user would send traffic encrypted to your uh, to your Azure Application Gateway. The Azure Application Gateway would decrypt the traffic. Then it will do all the intelligence of like routing. Uh, if there are some like a specific HTTP, uh, HTTP settings, things like health probe or something like that, it would um, uh, it would do all that intelligence. And then later on, it would re-encrypt the traffic when it's being sent to the uh, to the backend pool. So you would have here an end-to-end -end, uh, encryption for the user traffic. <clears throat> Excuse me. The other thing is that you could uh, you could configure the uh, or the app, the app gateway to do the uh, what is called the SSL offloading or SSL termination. So that if you don't want your backend services to be doing uh, the uh, the encryption, um, and, and which will like uh, which will offload the amount of CPU that your backend services need to spend for the encryption and decryption, um, the uh, the Azure Application Gateway could provide you with that. And the Azure Application Gateway it can also, which is in, in version two, can also manage the certificate uh, that's been used, been used for the encryption. It could even rewrite HTTP headers to remove uh, sensitive information that could reveal uh, information about your backend services. It, it also integrates with Azure Key Vault to say to um, store your certificates and also provide what is called a neutral TLS, which is really beautiful um, uh, technology. The idea is that when we talked about end-to-end uh, -end encryption between the user and the uh, backend service or backend pool, you could uh, you could do what is called a mutual uh, TLS, uh, a mutual TLS, which is the idea is that the Backend service will authenticate that this is the application gateway I should talk to, and the application uh, gateway also authenticate that this is the web app that I should talk to. So this this way, it, this is what is called a mutual TLS. So you are trying to make to take your security to the next level, making sure you know, each component is actually uh, what it says it is. The next is uh, the next superpower here. Uh, which is what I call a flexible backend services. This is a really, uh, this is what I what I refer to as like one app to rule them all, one app gateway. So the idea is that the uh, the application gateway actually not only just give you access to uh, load balance traffic or like protect your traffic as well for virtual machines, virtual machine scale set. It actually uh, integrates with um, Azure Kubernetes service. It in uh, integrates with um, Azure App Service. It even uh, integrates with um, your on-premises servers. So if you've got servers, uh, sorry, web apps um, built in on different type of technologies, Azure Application Gateway provides you this one place where you could load balance, provide all the beauty and the intelligence of Azure Application Gateway in, uh, in one place. Next, let's talk about uh, basic concepts of Azure Application Gateway. This will help you understand when you are trying to uh, uh, navigate your way through documentation or when you are trying to build a um, your first uh, application gateway or, uh, or implement new features. So the first thing is we'll talk about is that we'll talk about uh, the Azure Application Gateway components, and then we'll talk about the how, how, how an Azure Application Gateway actually uh, works. So, uh, there are a couple of components involved in Azure Application Gateway, things like the front-end IP address. This is the IP address of your web app. So let's say your, your web app is controls.com, when you use DNS and resolve to an IP address, it would be resolved to an IP address of what is called the front-end IP address. Uh, it's always a static IP address. It could be a private or a public IP address. Um, uh, mainly it's a public IP address because you want to expose it to the public. And uh, in the case where we talked about multi-site, where like you've got a uh, fabricom.com and contoso.com, there are, uh, both of them would be resolving to the same IP, both of these, uh, I should say, C names would be resolving to the same front-end IP address. Um, a, a listener, the listener component is where you uh, would be listening to a specific, uh, to traffic coming into a, uh, on a specific port or to a specific service. 
routing truth is what we use to uh, decide if we use path-based routing or if we use um, uh, multi-site routing, and then the uh, backend, the, the HTTP settings, and uh, which we have things like the uh, help probe, and backend pool is the pool of services, and again, um, talking about the health probe to make sure that the status of your backend services is healthy. The next we'll talk about like how an application gateway actually works. The first thing happens when the uh, when a client sends a request to the Azure Application Gateway is that it goes through a web check, web application firewall check, just to make sure that it is not a, a security threat and it's actually allowed to talk to the um, Azure Application Gateway. Next, it, that it would uh, it would check a routing rule based on the um, uh, that is associated with a listener. So the listener would be listening to uh, HTTP request on a specific port. It would go to a uh, to the routing rule based on what we defined as, as either a URL-based uh, routing or multi-site-based uh, routing. It would decide where to forward the uh, it would decide where to forward the traffic. And then finally, the session get um, the, the session get associated with the backend service. When the backend send, service sends a request back, uh, it would send it back to the Azure Application Gateway, and then the Azure Application Gateway would send it on its way to the client. Finally, we have a simple um, uh, app gateway demo app. The idea is that we have a uh, virtual machine scale set, three virtual machine scale set in this case. Um, and we will be sending traffic based on uh, the uh, URL based uh, URL uh, path routing, I should say. Uh, so if traffic contains the word images, it will be sent to the um, VM scale set of uh, that uh, back end pool of uh, images. If the traffic contains the word video, it will be sent to the sorry, URL path contains the word video, it will be sent to the back end pool uh, of uh, video. If the traffic doesn't contain any of those, it will be sent to the general site. Uh, and this is what is called as a path-based uh, routing. Now that we are ready, let's start to create our uh, application gateway and then test the um, uh, test the result. So the first thing we'll do is that we'll just create a, a couple of variables that we'll address later on in our uh, configuration. Of course, this is a terminal that I've signed in um, uh, that I've signed into the uh, uh, Azure Portal uh, already using the Azure CLI uh, with the command um, uh, exit login. So the first thing that we need to do is actually we need to create a resource group for our um, application. In this case, the resource group is called App Gateway Back to School, and then the location would be Australia. It is successfully created the uh, the resource group. Next, we'll be creating a VNet for our App Gateway. We'll create a backend subnet in this case. And then finally, we'll create a public IP address that will be assigned to our uh, app gateway. And I'll have all this code on my repo, repo, and you'll find it in the description of the video. Next, we'll create the uh, web application firewall uh, policy. In this case, we gave it the name back to school uh, WAF policy, and then we use the uh, OSAP uh, OWS ASP uh, framework with a version of 3.2. So let's do that. Next will be to actually create the uh, Azure Application Gateway. In here, we are saying use this resource group uh, put it in Australia East. This is the VNet. This is the subnet. This is the license, which is normally two. Uh, this is the SKU. This is the uh, SKU that will allow us to use the web application uh, firewall. Um, we don't want to use session affinity in this case. We'll be listening to port 80. Um, the HTTP setting will also be 80. This is used if you want to use something temporary. Um, it will be listening to the HTTP port using the public IP address that we created earlier, using the, web, uh, the WAF policy. And then this is for uh, routing purposes, uh, which is which is uh, something that we'll not address in this video. Next, we will be uh, creating the, um, we'll be creating the backend pools and the, uh, the HTTP port that we will be uh, listening to. Now let's create our backend listener.
Next is where the magic would actually happen. Well, we are basically saying here, if the traffic contains the word images, send it to the um, uh, address pool called images backend pool. If the traffic contains the word video, send it to the uh, video backend pool. Next, we will be using what is called a, a routing rule. This routing rule will reference the um, what is called a URL path map, which basically means use the, uh, the, the, the URL to decide which path to send the, um, uh, the traffic to. So let's create our routing rule here. Next comes in our uh, virtual machine scale set. So these are the scale set will, that will be the uh, backend pool for our uh, application gateway. What this code is basically doing, it is just uh, talking about creating um, three pools of uh, VM scale set. One is called uh, the app gateway backend pool, images backend pool, video backend pool. It goes through this uh, command uh, three times as uh, creating a, a VM scale set, assigning to this resource group um, using a bunch of uh, Linux and image that we defined uh, early when we created the variables at the start of the uh, tutorial. These are the username, of course. These are just for testing. So we are using really bad practice of username and password. And then uh, the rest of the configuration. So we'll copy this here and then we'll run it. Now that we provision our virtual machine scale set, let's install uh, Nginx, which is our uh, web server for our uh, case here. Uh, well, we will be installing this uh, on uh, our uh, VM scale set. So now that we've installed our web server on our VM scale set backend pool, uh, we use this command to find out the IP address of our uh, application gateway, and this is the IP address of our um, app gateway in this case. So I will be using this IP address with these um, URLs, and we'll see if we are getting different backend pool based on what URL we are using. As you can see here, we are able to access our web app from using this app, and in this case, uh, it is telling me this is the VM scale set that we are using. And if we add in the word uh, images, it goes to the uh, other VM scale set uh, back in pool, which is uh, dedicated to images. And again, with the word video, it sends the traffic to the uh, video uh, VM scale set. And if we go back to the Azure portal and start to explore our portal here, we find in this uh, resource group that we've got what we've got the, uh, the you know, web application firewall policy, we've got our public IP, the app gateway, and our three VM scale set, and of course our VNet. If we go into details into the uh, app gateway, this is the IP address of our app gateway, and then this is the uh, web application firewall using this uh, web uh, policy. Uh, this, this is the backend pools that we've got here. Um, this is the HTTP settings, which is, in this case, we disabled we added only one setting disabling uh, uh, session affinity. Um, this is the IP address that we use, the public IP address that we've got. Um, this is our listener uh, listening to traffic for uh, listening for HTTP traffic and port 8080. Um, uh, this is the rule where we've got the uh, the basic rule, which is sending traffic directly to the general website, and then the path based rule. Where we've got, um, uh, where we are using the listener, and then in here we are saying if, the, if it contains, this is the URL path map. If it contains the word images, then send traffic to the backend images. If it contains the word video, send traffic to the backend um, uh, video. And yeah, that's about it. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. Uh, please like and subscribe, and uh, see you in the next one. Bye.